This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Join a community of over 31,000 photographers that includes equipment insurance, education, and business tools made specifically for small business owners like you. So I uh, have recently discovered an issue with, uh, I guess, my photography as of late. I was reviewing uh, a lot of those photos from uh, my Iceland trip and I started to notice something uh, very obvious, not 100% certain as to how I missed it before, but pretty much everything that I was shooting was the, the grand scenes, the, the large landscapes. And, you know, part of that could be attributed to the fact that that was my very first trip to Iceland, which is, uh, a little overwhelming. It's uh, such an incredible place and uh, it's very easy for me, or I find it easy, to want to try and capture everything. So I think that could have been one of the problems with it, but I need to, uh, or I want to, to solve this problem as quickly as possible. So I've, uh, I've always found that uh, little personal challenges for myself are uh, a good way to try and break these types of, uh, I guess, bad habits or uh, uh, kind of routines that I, I regularly get into. So I came out here to this uh, local woodland area and my goal here is to put on a long lens and try and find the, the intimate details, the, the intimate scenes that um, I wasn't really seeing when I was in Iceland. I'm uh, teaching a, a workshop in Acadia National Park in uh, maybe a little over a week now and I wanna really try and solve this problem sooner rather than later. So I came out here to try and kinda, of, I guess, flex my creative muscle, muscles a little bit, or I should say maybe stretch my creative uh, mind some, just to see if I can start to, uh, what's the saying? See the woods for the forest or to see the trees? Can't see the forest for the trees or, or whatever that, uh, that saying is, but uh, just trying to, to get my mind to kinda of see things a little bit differently. So one thing that has really helped me kind of break this, um, I guess, trend, if you will, because this has happened to me, or I should say this has been a, a kind of a consistent problem I've had for years, is uh, just kind of seeing kind of one-sided. I'm either seeing the, the grand scene or I'm seeing the intimate details. I've talked about this before, about trying to create storyboards to try and get variety from, from uh, locations. And sometimes I do it well, sometimes I don't do it well. And this is one of those times where I, I'm only seeing the grand scene. So I'm out here today. One of the things that has really helped me kind of break this issue, like I mentioned, I've been dealing with this for quite a while, is a camera strap. This is probably the only time I use a camera strap, but I like to put on a long lens, hand hold, no tripod, and just put this strap on because for me, this is a, kind of a very freeing feeling to, to, to not be tied down to the actual tripod, to not have to move your tripod around, to not have to get really granular with how you're setting up your shots. Just kind of move around, look through your, your camera, look through the viewfinder, looking for little pockets of, uh, what I'm doing right now is looking for pockets of interesting light. There's an area behind me on this tree, kind of right here, that a um, little bit of light is coming through every once in a while and it's illuminating this area and there's some nice contrast, a couple of different types of trees right here. So I'm kind of looking for those types of um, interesting details right now. A little early for fall foliage right now, but the little pockets or puddles of light are starting to come through and it's uh, starting to look pretty interesting. So uh, yeah, the camera strap is definitely something that has uh, really helped my photography to try and uh, kind of break, I guess, old habits or trends that I'm getting into. There he comes, that light again. It's 
coming in and out. And it's not lasting long, but it does make this otherwise kind of dull scene a little bit more exciting. I'm gonna get a little bit of variety zoomed all the way in, zoom all the way out. This is a 100 to 200 millimeter lens on a medium format camera, which is, uh, I believe right around like a maybe an 80 to 180 or 70 to 180, somewhere right around that range. So not super long. So I found this interesting, uh, this log with all this uh, interesting colors and uh, things growing on it. I'm not 100% certain as to what it is, but uh, it looks, it looks pretty cool. I'm just waiting for a little bit of light to, uh, to kind of brush across it. Uh, the light's been kind of coming in and out this uh, entire morning, but I like the color contrast here. I am gonna put on a, uh, a circular polarizer to try and uh, kind of bring out some of those colors just a little bit more. There's a little bit of a sheen on whatever this is that's growing on it. But um, that's something else that I think is uh, really changed my photography overall is just the use of a circular polarizer. I harp on it all the time, I know. But um, it's one of those things that it's, uh, it's a real game changer in my opinion. I, I love to shoot around uh, moving water. So uh, whenever, you know, whenever you're shooting around water, a polarizer is almost an absolute uh, requirement. But if you, are, um, if you are looking to start using filters, you don't have any yet, I would highly recommend starting with a circular polarizer. You'd be surprised how many situations will, can actually be improved just by putting a, uh, a polarizer on just like in this scenario right here, now that that light is starting to kind of come through, I'm gonna take a couple of these shots real quick. Hmm. Good light might be starting to, uh, to fade. Let me, uh, I shouldn't say fade. Good light might be getting harsh, so it's definitely not fading. But uh, I did want to take a quick moment and just uh, thank the sponsor of this week's video, which is Professional Photographers of America. I uh, first found them in March of this year, and I was looking for uh, camera insurance. I always got questions about, you know, who do you insure your, your camera gear? And I never did. I never had a good answer for it, so I started to do some research. I always thought you just had to add it to your homeowner's policy or something like that, but I did a quick Google search and found a Professional Photographers of America, and they offer uh, insurance. And in all honesty, that was the main reason I went with them. They have a very, very affordable insurance plans. They, they cover, I, I believe, uh, 15, up to $15,000 at a flat $350 deductible. If you, if you break your camera, break your lens, there is a, uh, a repair deductible, a flat, flat deductible rate of uh, only $50 for that. So it definitely adds some peace of mind. And I've been using them since, uh, since March of this year. And like I said, I got it just for the insurance, which has been absolutely fantastic. But it comes to find out there's a lot of other additional things that come with that membership as well. There is a data recovery options or solutions for you, which is always a good thing. If you have a hard drive fail and you just went on you know, the most epic trip of your life, that's never a good thing. They can definitely help you to uh, try and retrieve those photos off of whatever uh, device failed for you. And they also offer contracting options as well. So if you are a professional photographer, wedding photographer, portraits, events, uh, landscapes, whatever the case may be, if that is your business, you're more than likely gonna need some type of contract or legal documents and uh, Professional Photographers of America America has custom templates that uh, can help you achieve just that. So I'll put a link in the description below. Save you $25 off your membership. If uh, you want to uh, get additional information, you'll get the, uh, the $25 discount by clicking the link below. Something else that I think is a, a real game changer as far as just um, you know, photographic equipment and gear goes is, uh, is an L bracket. So uh, I have, uh, let me take mine off. So the, for the first couple of, uh, of years that I was uh, into photography, I, I, I never used an L bracket. I really wasn't 100% certain as to what they were really even for. But now I've got an L bracket on, on my GFX 100S. I got one on my X-T4 that I'm filming on right now. And it's just absolutely fantastic for being able to switch from a horizontal orientation to a portrait orientation. Super simple. Now I know that might not seem like a big deal, but 
it's so easy and it's so effortless and you don't have to change your overall composition. You don't have to, to roll your ball head over. You can just literally unlatch your camera, flip it on the, uh, the uh, long side or whatever the opposite side is and lock it down. Your composition really doesn't change. So for me, when things are very simple, I tend to do it more often. And I always think that whenever you're on location, you should always shoot in, in portrait and in, in a landscape orientation, just get a variety. You never know what you're gonna actually like. And having an L bracket is a, is a great way to make that as easy as humanly possible for you. And while we're on the topic of uh, L brackets, I think a tripod is actually one of the most, uh, perhaps one of the most underrated pieces of kit uh, that a photographer owns. I, uh, I've bought so many cheap tripods when I first got started and I ended up replacing all of them, but I think getting a really sturdy one and paying a little bit extra is definitely going to be worth the money. It's kind of hard to see sometimes, but especially if you're using a, uh, a longer lens and you have a very flimsy tripod, it might seem like it's, it's holding your, your camera steady. But when you get those images back home, you'll start to wonder exactly, you know, like, why are all your photos so soft? And uh, it's, there's a very, very high likelihood that that is because that the tripod is not holding your cameras quite as still as you think you are. And especially if you're using longer shutter speeds or if you have a heavier setup. So investing in a heavy duty tripod, I shouldn't say heavy duty, just a, a solid tripod is definitely a, a, a good piece uh, or a good investment. Uh, the two that I have, let me turn you around here. So I have the, uh, the really right stuff. I think it's a TVC 34L. That's kind of the, my travel setup. And then this is my, uh, my Photo Pro tripod. This is a much uh, heavier setup here, but uh, both of them are rock solid. This one, of course, is gonna be even more solid than the really right stuff one, but those are the two that I use and I'm super happy with both of them. Now, I know I'm probably gonna catch some flack over this one, but one of the things that has really improved my photography this year and, well, let's jump right into it. It's this, the Fuji GFX 100S. And I know, I know before people start to, uh, to rip me up over that, one of the things, and this is a very specific thing I was having an issue with, and this is just me, but when I was shooting all of my stills with uh, the X-Series, the X-T4 and the X-T3, it's a 26 megapixel camera, which is perfectly fine. I wasn't printing huge, but the issue I was having is cropping. So if I didn't get the composition pretty dialed in on location, and I had to crop in a fair amount in post, the photos would, would fall apart pretty quickly. But with this, you know, this is a 100, megap 100 megapixel medium format camera. There's a lot of latitude, a lot of flexibility to crop now and post. So I feel like I can compose images a little bit looser on location now and still have plenty of uh, information when I get back to the, uh, the, uh, the computer to, to crop the image, to kind of compose, or I should say perfect the composition a little bit better because there's so much resolution in these files. So it's something that I have definitely seen an improvement in my own photography this year was, uh, was getting this uh, higher resolution camera for, for me. Now, other people might be a heck of a lot better at composition and composing while on location than me. Evidently, I, uh, I struggled a little bit with the X series because I found myself needing to crop those photos uh, a fair amount. And I always struggled because the photos just fell apart pretty quickly with a substantial crop applied. So yeah, so if you happen to be struggling with uh, seeing compositions or, or seeing a different, uh, I should say seeing a variety of compositions, definitely try this exercise out. It's definitely been a, a lifesaver for me. Just get a, a camera strap, put on a long lens, go to a woodland area where there really isn't a grand scene and just force yourself to make something. And uh, you'd be surprised that uh, you can really get those creative juices flowing again and kind of get you uh, thinking a little bit differently. So to, to, the last thing that has really improved my photography, and this is a change that I made maybe over two years ago, maybe three years ago now, but it's basically reducing my entire lens lineup. I, at one time I had five or six lenses. Now I only own two. I've owned two for a while now, a, a longer lens and a wider lens. My wide lens is a, lens is a 23 millimeter prime, which is uh, on a full frame camera, roughly about 18 millimeters. So it's plenty wide enough. This isn't super long, but it's long enough to, for what I really need. And uh, plus the ability to crop in definitely helps with the, uh, the shorter length that this is. But nevertheless, I have a wide solution and a long solution. And the big benefit to me is the fact that it just keeps me a little bit more focused. It doesn't clutter my mind as much. I don't have four or five lenses, A, to carry around, and B, to determine as to what lens I need to use for a particular composition. For me, it's either just go wide or go long. It simplifies everything. And anyone who's watched this channel for any length of time knows that I like to keep things as simple as humanly possible. And a two lens setup has definitely helped me do that. I do think it has improved my photography as well. Oh, that was, uh, 
that's been fantastic. This is a good morning out. This is a, am I even in frame here? This is a, a good, a good, a good exercise for me to go through. It was much needed. Ever since I got back from Iceland, I have been sitting behind a computer day after day after day, just trying to catch up on, uh, on work and things like that. So um, I needed to get out and stretch my creative legs a little bit. What does it say? Flex your creative muscles. Oh, there goes a couple deer right there. I can never capture them. There's another one. But uh, nevertheless, good morning out. I appreciate you all watching this week's video. Be sure to check out the link below for the uh, Professional Photographers of America. Get a little bit of an information, additional information on the products and services that they offer, along with the $25 discount as well. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And I'll put links down in the description below um, in regards to all of the gear that I mentioned in this video. So if you wanna check that out as well. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video, and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.